as woodworkers, we're often uh, completing a task and we come to a point where we want to apply a finish and the confusion surrounding finishes is quite really big. Uh, but I've distilled it down over the years. I use a couple of finishes, a couple of wood finishes. It doesn't mean I can't diverge and go into another type of finish or, or whatever, but I've narrowed it down to what I feel are really good for my furniture. The one I use predominantly is shellac. This is just a, a very natural wood finish. Um, it comes from the lacberg. It's just a dissolved um, material that comes from the lacberg and it's, uh, it's recomposed into a liquid form and it comes in a bottle, usually a jug of some kind, large and small. I usually decant into a smaller container from a bigger one and that works perfectly well. So I've got shellac on one hand and then on the other one, I want something that is more protected than shellac. So I've gone with a water-based finish because it's low volatile um, in terms of the uh, release of chemistry into the atmosphere, the harmful effects that would cause damage to the ozone and things like that. So I, I'm not sure, I'm not really a chemist exactly what the damage is, but I do know I like the waterborne finishes because they're very durable. So I've got my shellac on one hand. The downside of shellac is if you use it and you put an alcohol, a spirit alcohol drink on the surface, spill it, something like that, it is immediately dissolved by the alcohol. So that's the difference. Now a beer won't hurt it, um, wine won't hurt it, but spirit alcohol will. So that's the downside of it. But that doesn't mean it can't be used for the greatest majority of pieces of furniture you make around the home. You, could, you can use it on bedside tables, beds, you can use it on, on uh, bookshelves and, and low um, risk areas. But what you really want is something that's durable. And shellac is a very durable finish. It's an ancient finish. It's age old finish. It lasts a long time and it can be easily repaired. So that's the main advantage of that. Now then, when it comes to water, and if you're going to be spilling water a lot in that area, that becomes questionable. It's still pretty good as a durable surface, with, even with water, but on a constant dripping basis, say for instance your dining table, you may, I think, want something a lot more durable than shellac. And one of the best things about the waterborne finish is it's water cleanup, it's easy to apply, it dries to a nice finish and, you can, and, it, and it's very, very durable. I've tested this over the years. I really like the way it feels, the way it looks. And so I use a, a durable water-based finish on dining tables or on a surface where I might want that type of durability, especially when it comes to alcohol. Spill alcohol on this and it won't uh, affect the finish. That's the great thing about it. So that's the, the, the two finishes that I rely on the most. Is, there are other finishes, oil, oil finishes, many others. A lot of them are very chemical and I don't really like the chemicals that go into them. So applying the finish, I use the shellac and I usually apply it with one of two brushes. I use a wide brush for a large area and a narrow brush for small areas like door handles, tool handles, small projects like small boxes and so on. I apply one coat leave it to dry, sand that first coat a little bit with 240, 300 grit, and then go in for a second coat and a third coat sometimes. I look at the surface and see if there's got flat spots and it means it needs another coat. As soon as it becomes very shiny, I've got enough finish on for good protection. What I do after that is I take the steel wool and I apply uh, the steel wool to some furniture, soft furniture polish uh, get a pad with the steel with the polish on and then go over the surface over the whole surface and this cuts the surface and it waxes that surface after that I go with a soft cloth I can go with a shoe shine brush or a soft brush and go over the whole lot what that does it denibs the surface but it also gives the surface a little bit less of a shine than the clear uh, shellac will give you because the shellac will give you a very high gloss Go in with that, you'll get a, 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 a sheen um, of a finish on it. It's very pleasant and it feels wonderful to the touch. When I apply the water-based finish, I go in after the first coat, let it dry, two hours, whatever. Now follow the instructions on the cam because some instructions will be different. But go in after two or three hours, sand that first coat with a 240, 300 grit, 
wipe it down, clean it off with a damp uh, tissue or cloth, and then recoat it again with the next coat. Usually they will apply, they will suggest you apply three coats, and three coats is usually good. So that second coat you apply, wait the, the uh, recommended time, go in with your third coat, apply that coat. How do you apply it? Almost always with a brush, but that's what the recommendation is. I suggest that you fill a tray with the finish, roll it on with a roller, and then take a soft pad like this. This is a very short nap on it, it's very soft, and then go with the grain and pull with the grain from one end to the other and get the, the striations from the brush will be in the surface. What happens with this type of finish is the surface tension tightens as it shrinks and, it, and it's, it's actually shrinking and stretching at the same time because as it shrinks, it stretches the finish and that takes out all the lines from any brush that you might use. That's how I apply all of the coats using the pad after I've rolled it on. Rolling it on is very fast. The problem is it does introduce air bubbles to the finish and that's what the pad does. The pad takes out the air bubbles, gives you a pristine finish. After you've done that last coat, do exactly the same with you, as you did with the shellac. Take the steel wool, dip it into the uh, soft wax polish and buff it out with the soft wax polish and that will take out the nibbing, on any nibbing on the surface and you'll end up with a wonderful finish.